Pat. Our first speaker will be Christopher Losinski about bloggery. Please give him a big hand. It's my great pleasure to introduce Python Bloggery, the world's largest Python directory. Like Yahoo Directory or DMOZ, Bloggery is a tree of categories with links to useful web pages. If you search on Google for Python, you'll find snakes, you'll find Monty Python, you'll find things that are out of date. You'll get a list of 15 million results. It's a flat list. When you come to Bloggery, it's all curated by over 100 volunteers. Um, it's structured as a tree. We respect your privacy. You don't track what, what you visit. Um, it's structured as a tree. The first thing that everyone needs is a database library. So here you can see Python, Python database, persistent Python, 0DB, 0DB videos. You can click over to the video you want, or if you want to just browse around, you can click around the tree. Um, in particular, it's amazing how Many more people should know about persistent Python, ZeoDB. It's wonderful software. I highly recommend it. <clears throat> it's way too much for any one individual to do such a large project. What I do is I don't scrape the web. I import structured content. So blogs come in as RSS and Atom feeds. I highly recommend Plone because you can structure your blog as a tree, and I can import it as an XML. Um, and then there are many markdown libraries to be imported. There's some YAML stuff, the, the videos from here. And of course, it's also got a web user interface, so it's a content management system. Very close to Plone. Um, everybody has their own tree, and they're all structured differently. So on the right-hand side, you see lots of private trees. They're all imported and merged into the single global tree. It's great for senior developers. You can link to your GitHub or Bitbucket repositories, PyPy packages. If you have blogs, your blog postings, articles, YouTube videos, um, resources elsewhere. It's excellent for the intermediate developer because instead of spending all your time going to Google and searching, you can just go to Bloggery and learn what's available in the categories that are of interest to you. Of course, the micro bit is the big thing because all these beginners, they don't want to spend their time searching. They just want to learn what's available and they want to, and it's an opportunity for the senior developers to connect in with all those new micro developers and let them know about your products. I invite you to take a test drive. It's all done in Python on top of ZODB with fancy tree JavaScript libraries. Um, it's behind an Nginx server, so I was told it should be able to handle this crowd. Let me know how it goes. And I would invite you to come by um, the booth for a test drive tomorrow, and we can talk about your Python web assets and which categories they belong in. Also on Saturday, there's a link fest. So what we're going to do is bring, break up into small groups of people interested in the same categories, so you can find people who are interested in just what you are, and then work together with them to, to identify the important resources, which ones we should be linking to, link to them, and talk to them about your issues. Um, I invite you to come to the booth. I invite you to come on Saturday. Um, if you go to the website on add your blog, email and password, you can stay connected, get email updates. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Crystal. <laughs> Anselm? Anselm? Who's All right, Anselm? Uh, guys, I had a request. Um, uh, Gil, will you stand up? All right, see, Gil here has got stickers. Can you see him over here in the front? Gil, stand up, make yourself really obvious. Gil here has got stickers for PSF members. So if you're a PSF member, put your hand up. For the rest of the Lightning Talks, watch out for Gil. As he comes near your row, spot him, wave to him discreetly, and he'll give you an amazing PSF sticker. That's how it's going to work. Gil and the PSF stickers, congratulations and thank you for being PSF members. And you overloaded their hands up thing again. So. <laughs> <laughs> now no, no, they are confused. <laughs> so while Anselm is setting up, a quick time much. travel joke. You didn't like it, sorry. <laughs> Anselm. Yeah. Tux, uh, Tux Academy. Great training materials for free. I think this thing just died. And which starship is this? Oops. Help me crowd. Let's crowdsource that thing. That's a bird of prey from the Klingons, isn't it? <laughs> Oops. 
It's Firefly. Firefly had only had one season, so why do you get one season ship on the screen? Oops, I, can't, I can't seem to make this work, I'm afraid. You can't seem to make it, it work? It, it, can, can we just skip one or...? Yeah, so we skip to the random guys. Yeah. Yeah. Just so I can see what... The Penguin of Doom. I'm so random. Who got this joke? Nobody. It's nobody's nerd culture anymore. All right. I've got okay. Our next speakers will be David Naranga and Marco. Mario. Almost. Mario. Cortero. Cortero. Yeah, Very good. <laughs> and they'll be talking about random, random online. So the deeply needed random as a service. You ready? Yeah. Big hand. Hello everyone, so this is uh, David Naranjo and Mario Corchero. Uh, we are two because we are shit nervous. So if we faint or anything, please next speaker come and let's do like nothing of this happened. Uh, so we are here to share uh, our experience when we built in, uh, a site. Uh, we really had no idea what we were doing, just plugging things together. Uh, to give some context, we built a site where you can generate random stuff. We'll give more information about the site afterwards. But the interesting thing is some highlights, how, it, how did it go? So first highlight, we managed to generate our own spam. This is how my inbox uh, bug looked like when I set up Monit to tell me whenever something goes wrong. Apache decided to get some CPU spikes uh, every other day, uh, interseconds, so generating hundreds of emails. So as good engineers, we went to the source of the problem. Um, Monit was generated too many emails, so we just raised the threshold, right? <laughs> uh, second highlight, uh, we managed to make people make money with our site. One morning, uh, one morning we received this email. Uh, it's in Spanish. It says that our site was having some anomalous activities. Uh, we figured out there was a, a, a phishing uh, website hosting a VPS, which was hacking uh, credit cards, making like they were a Swedish, Swedish government for tax revenue and blah, blah, blah. Um, also, uh, I have a guinea pig. His name is uh, Mordis Kitos. Uh, he loves to watch Game of Thrones with us, and uh, he likes to travel around the world, especially the beach places. Third highlight, it's never too late to, hi uh, to release. Uh, there's this night, uh, 11 p.m., uh, you have been working on something, and you really want to, to release it today because it's ready and has been tested. So you just push the prod, and whilst it's being deployed, you just go to sleep. Uh, bugs, bugs everywhere. Everyone, uh, so the three of us that work in the project received a lot of mails because every, every time we have an error logged, we get the email. Well, everyone but him because he had a spam filter after the money thing. And uh, so then I connected to, to the prod server, uh, changed some lines of code and restart Apache. <laughs> and uh, also together with uh, copying the data to Notepad++ and search and replace and paste again, Whilst I was getting in the mobile phone, ping, ping, uh, still errors generated. Well, it was a fun uh, evening. Well, I wanted to talk about a couple of things about knowing your user before you implement anything like big or huge. Uh, the thing I wanted to say was uh, that uh, we knew that our 95% uh, of our traffic was Spanish people. So it would, it would have made sense to put Spanish as the default language, but we didn't. We set up English because of reasons. Why not? And, uh, and that what happened is that uh, we managed to lose two thirds of our traffic in only four months. <laughs> and uh, when, yeah. <laughs> when later we managed to recover it during the last year, but it was, uh, in the end it was uh, not so bad. Um, oh yeah, another parenthesis. Uh, this is Extremadura, this is the region we, we both come from. It's a very nice place with many things, and that was my village. And uh, yeah, the, the name literally means stream hard. I don't know why, but it's, it means that. And uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with the uh, presentation, but it's just, uh, I say it because it bugs me when everybody asks me where I'm from and nobody knows where it is. So it's there in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and yeah, after that, um, another thing I wanted to say is that uh, uh, we considered that there was a, a, a new functionality that was, we couldn't find on any other website that was making a collaborative draw where anybody can join and, and see live results and talk in a chat room and everything. It sounded like a perfect idea, didn't it? Uh, it turned out it didn't so much because after setting up everything, implementing a lot of things and, and uh, everything is in production, we tested in, we go to analytics and we see that this nine, the blue thing is a normal draw and the 0.9% it's the shared draw that we have put so much effort to implement. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. we. In the end, we improve a little the figures, like at least 1%. Uh, 
but we did it, but well, it's not so bad, it's, uh, it's worth. And um, well, just to have a look of uh, what is the website for, uh, you can generate random numbers, arrow, cards, die, like making random groups, coin, setting uh, points from a picture, uh, tournaments, raffles on Facebook and so on. And uh, well, uh, now it has uh, over 2K visits per month. Like 2K Comet was still impressed me because I don't know how can we make so many comments on it, but it's fine. And, uh, and yeah, a lot of technologies and things that we learned that we are really happy that the, all the things that we learned. And yeah, it's fully open source. If anyone wants to create a new draw or anything, it's more than welcome. Um, yeah, in the end, we enjoyed a lot doing it. Oh yeah, this is a thing. Thanks a lot for, uh, for this time. And I hope you're enjoying seeing us suffering in pain here in the light of. Thank you very much. Woo! Wonderful. Peter Victorin. Sorry. Ah, Anselm again. You might have another go at this. Yeah, different to Firefly, which only had one go. Yeah. Sadly. Uh, this thing always. This thing always. Work, so, doesn't work. who visited the keynote this morning? It was great, wasn't it? And <laughs> kind of ironic. Python is a language which is the only language in the world has a module for anti-gravity which you can import. And that language which has a module for anti-gravity was used to detect gravitational <laughs> waves. Nope, it doesn't no? work. No good? We're still fighting? It doesn't, doesn't move when I doesn't do move. The other thing was, uh, some of our, us asked his guy, did you think it was a prank when you got it? And he was explaining before that uh, during that gravitational wave to produce it, uh, the mass of three suns was converted into energy. I was thinking, wow, that's some effort for a prank. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So, do we have to skip like a sci fi channel skipped Firefly? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Right. I can do another choke with those two uh, black holes. Yeah, I just have to reboot this thing and see if whether that changes anything. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Peter Miloslav, are you somewhere near the front? Miroslav, oh, no, no, Peter is already setting up. Very good. All right, will you put your hand up if you went to an open space? All right, keep your hands up. Will you put your hand up if you've been to visit and speak to a sponsor? Keep the hands up. All right, fine. And will you keep your hand up if you've made it to every single I one the of the hmm? uh, morning so keynotes? Which VGA? Now, everybody that hasn't got a hand up right now, you should be embarrassed. You're not taking full advantage of this conference. <laughs> Particularly, by the way, the sponsors who, uh, every time I go and speak to a sponsor, I'm like kind of dragging my feet going, well, I suppose I should do this, but they're just going to, yeah, it's going to be all commercial nonsense. And actually, I inevitably enjoy the conversation. <laughs> so, did you miss his, uh, do, do you still have his talk title? Uh, whatever. Oh, it's, it's, oh, Peter Victorin about whatever. Give him a big hand. <laughs> yeah, so I want to talk about two new peps that are making it to Python 3.6, but I need to kind of dis, uh, describe descriptors first. So let's say you're building kind of an ORM like, uh, like Django's models. You have a little database, and you want to have a class that represents row in that database. Uh, now, as a first attempt, you might do a class like this, uh, get a number of the row, uh, copy the name and whatever attributes you want into your class, and hey, you have uh, sort of like an ORM thing. Uh, the problem is if you, uh, if you change something in that class, uh, the database doesn't get up updated. So what you can do uh, to fix that is uh, add a set name function, call the set name function to change whatever, uh, whatever attribute you want. The class is updated, the database is updated, all is good. Problem is if you create two classes like this, update just one of them, the other one will uh, get uh, left in the dark. What you can do is 
use properties. Uh, properties are kind of like uh, descriptors uh, on training wheels, kind of like descriptor zero. Uh, you can have a property that dynamically gets some attribute from, uh, from somewhere else, from your database. You can have a setter for that that uh, updates the database. Everything is nice. Uh, the problem now is all of this you have to uh, write for every attribute. It would be nice to kind of package that up in some framework so you wouldn't have to write that uh, all the time again. Uh, and for that, you can use descriptors. Descriptors are a bit like properties. They have a get function and a set function. Uh, there's a bit, a uh, bit more magic involved, but the good thing is you can have all this in us in some framework. You just import it, use it, uh, use it like this. You declare uh, your attribute to be a column with some name, and you're good. Uh, the problem here uh, that people found out is that you have to repeat this name two times. Uh, so oh. in Python 3.6, we are getting, uh, or well, before that, uh, uh, things like SQL Alchemy and Django uh, do a thing that is a bit like this. For every attribute in the class, you look if that, attrib if that attribute actually is a column. Uh, if it is, then you set its name. So now you don't have to use this name, but you have to uh, call this fix model function on every class. And that is handled by something called meta classes, which are giant black magic with uh, several drawbacks. One of these is that meta classes are not supported on MicroPython, uh, so we need something better. Uh, so, uh, in Python 3.6, there was a pep uh, accepted just this week. It's pep 4.8.7, uh, where you can, uh, uh, you can use an init subclass function. And whenever you make a class, uh, the init subclass of, uh, of the parent class gets called. So you can get all this magic in your framework, in your library, and then just subclass model. Everything is fixed. Everything is nice. Uh, you can do one more thing with that pip, and that is in, uh, in your descriptor class, there's a, now a set name function, which gets the name, so you can, you can kind of set it. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, don't have to repeat the name. So uh, this is the kind of change that gets added to Python by now. So you know, it's a pretty complete language. There are just these little quirks to iron out. Uh, one more quirk like that is, uh, the Django ORM, ORM needs to know the uh, order of these attributes, like the order they were defined in, to map that to the, the database columns. Uh, currently, that's done by, by a giant hack, uh, by pretty much having a global counter and keeping the track in which these uh, column classes were created. And then you can, uh, yeah, you can order them like on the last line there. You can see which one was created first, which one was created second. And for that problem, uh, PEP 520 was created. And uh, so now you, can, you have this attribute called definition order, uh, which gives you uh, the, names, the names of uh, whatever attributes were defined on the class uh, as is what is defined, so you can actually order by, uh, by this name. So uh, thank you. I think I'm out of time. So thank you for listening. Hope you got something from it. OK, third time is a charm. Ansim, so give him an encouraging applause. Give him an encouraging applause. Switch to EVA. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Third time lucky. Yep. How about if we recycle jokes from last year, but instead of me saying the punchline, the people who were here last year can say the punchline, mm -hmm. and then it's interactive. Da waren wir schon mal. So, for example, the right. pirate programmer, you remember, uh, walks into a bar, and uh, he's got a parrot on their shoulder, and uh, they walk up to the barman, and the parrot is going, pieces of nine, pieces of nine, pieces of nine. And the barman says, oh, I think... Uh, I think there's something wrong with your parrot, and the programmer says, "We have to switch to we have to switch to to VGA. Right. He tries the other port. Just in case you didn't hear that, the uh, the punchline is, it's a parity error. No.
Yeah, you guys, there wasn't enough of a groan, really. But it's not the end of the joke. It's not the end of the joke. Because then the barman says one more thing, right? It's like it's a two-sting, this joke. What does the barman then follow up with? Ah, yeah, I thought it was a bit off. Right. You made it? Um, I think slides are way overrated anyway. Okay. <laughs> I guess while we have this nice spaceship on screen, I can talk for a couple of minutes even without slides. So where, I'm, where am I coming from? I, um, I've been using Linux since about 1993 or so. For the last 15 years or so, I worked as a Linux instructor for a company in Germany. Um, that company stopped earlier um, this year for reasons. and. Um, one thing I did for my job was basically writing training materials, books on how to use Linux and other open source things. So I talked to my old boss, who also happened to be my new boss, what to do about these. And he said, no problem. Um, we we'll make these open source and you get to spend one day a week working on these. So um, there we are now. This, the project is called Tax Academy at www.taxacademy.org. Um, that's T-U-X, um, C-A-D-E-M-Y dot O-R-G. You have to stick the www in front, I'm afraid. I haven't got around to fixing that. But what we do have right now, or well, what do we mean open source? With open source, we mean um, Creative Commons by SA. So Creative Commons mean you get to share these, tweak these, um, use them however you like, even in your commercial classes. Um, by means that our copyright notices need to stay on, even if you tweak them and share them. And SA means share alike. So if you do tweak these and pass them on, other people get to use your tweaks and tweaks the, tweak these further. Um, so what do we have now? We do have training materials in German and English that mostly cover um, the LPI first level certification exams. We have training materials in German that cover the um, level two of the LPI training exams, and we have bits and pieces, including a manual on Python, which I just uploaded yesterday to celebrate this occasion. So do check that out if you want. Um, all of these are available in PDF which of course isn't a lot of fun to tweak. So I'm working on getting the LaTeX sources released for that as well. Um, so tweaking them will be more fun. What can you do? Um, you can read those, learn, share, teach. You can contribute, send, send me bug fixes that you find. You can, um, of course, if you want to contribute sections, chapters, new manuals, that would be great. Um, you can translate these into other languages if you like. You could learn German if you <laughs> like. want to read those that are in German still. And of course, the main thing you could do is spread the word. Um, we're still looking at the spaceship. So thank you very much. I'm very sorry about the slides. Spent two hours on those last night. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Woo. I'm so happy to have a native English speaker on stage with me. Harry, yes? which is the only word that's spelled incorrectly in an English dictionary? Um, incorrectly. Give yeah. him a big hand. You're looking for the port, or? Yes. OK. That was not the VG. Um, uh, okay. I'd just like to say, everyone, by the way, that I've made a change, a stylistic, sartorial we, change we to, to my usual there. Lightning Talks outfit do today. Does anyone this notice one? what it is? No okay. What? Yeah. So someone told me there's a, there's a sort of saying in Bilbao, which is this, which is, Ponte los zapatos, which basically means, put your shoes on. Uh, 
And so like, I'm very glad to do that. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't wear flip-flops is because when you're up on stage in front of a lot of people, a fight or flight reaction kicks in. It's very scary. So you want to feel like at any time you can actually run away really quickly. Um, so barefoot is one option, or like running shoes is good too. So yeah, just in the back of my head is that like sort of escape mechanism. Uh, <laughs> I guess the fight part is where you tell the jokes, right? That's where you take on the challenge and go, surely people will laugh at an incredibly bad pun. It must be possible. Oh, wait. Oh! Okay, wonderful. We have a full screen show. <laughs> Harry, you've got the title and the speaker. It's Miloslav. Hi, I'm Mila Puyman, and I just don't see it. Like, I cannot get, like, duplicated it, so I, it's kind of complicated to... Yeah, just to, look there. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> there, there's my name somewhere, like, upstairs. <laughs> Okay. Ah, oh, okay. So I would like to show you how you can control OpenOffice spreadsheet from Python. You maybe know that OpenOffice has an API, which allows you to control OpenOffice instance. But the API, which is called you know, UNO, is very really complicated. One does not want to use it directly. So I wrote a library called PyOO, which should provide some simple and Pythonic interface to this you know, API. So I will try to show you a few lines of code how you can use that library. First, I start OpenOffice. You just see that you got some process ID and no return count, so the OpenOffice is running. I said that it should listen on some socket. And if it's listening, I should be able to connect it and create new spreadsheet. I import the library, create a connection, and okay, it happened on the, my other screen. <laughs> Here is it. Like there is no do wow effect when it starts and pop ups, but. So I write to write, and okay, if I have the spreadsheet, which is new. I can also open existing spreadsheet, which is useful if you want to read same data or if we want to use some template. But, okay, I will take, take the first sheet because the, the data are in the sheets. I, I can get it by name or by index, and you see the name is correct. And, okay, data. This is how you assign data to that sheet. You may know the syntax, it's inspired by NumPy, so it's some two-dimensional array which set values to. And let's execute it. Okay, the data are in the spreadsheet. And you can set data or you can set formula. I guess like most of the people do spreadsheets because of these formulas. So in this example, I set formula to the spreadsheet. I use some helper which finds the correct cell range, and I read the value of the spreadsheet of the formula back, which is 3003. As you can see, it's calculated by the spreadsheet. Here's just the expression, and I got the same value in spreadsheet and in Python. And there's many more. You can format the code, you can save it. I will show one last thing, which are charts. And I have a chart, with, which is like interactive. If I change some value here, it will change the chart also. And I guess that's most for this talk. Uh, you, can, you can catch me and ask about advantages and disadvantages, because it's like kind of special solution. But main advantage is that you are using OpenOffice, which implemented most of the functionality you may need. Like you don't reinvent all the things when you are trying to, I don't know, some, find something Microsoft thing implemented somewhere, maybe documented, maybe not. And this is the link to the company GitHub where there is the library. There is some strange documentation about the API. And thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Little Rock. Very good. Next up is Fabio. Are you here, Fabio? After that, Alex. I think we, he will not have VGA, but HDMA, so sorry. You have to switch him, I guess. There we go. Give a man a fish, and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he will send you emails trying to get your bank account. Are you adequately prepared to rock? Do you know the all-man rock band that does not sing? Mount Rushmore? Let me wait. That was lame. <laughs> if life gives you melons... Correct. Okay. Okay. So Fabio. I have, a, I have a special request. I want to finish my talk 30 seconds before, so I can have a second talk in 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, maybe that, that suffice. Okay. So I'm Fabio. Uh, I work mainly. This is my GitHub account. Uh, this is my Twitter account. Um, I work mainly on Bokeh uh, visualization library. I do nice uh, things, but today I want to um, talk about something new. Um, who here have heard about Jupyter Notebooks? More or less everyone. Uh, and who here have heard about Jupyter Lab? Okay, not so many. I would say 5%, maybe less. So Jupyter Lab is the new, um, is what is going to be the new Jupyter uh, environment. And uh, the Jupyter team just released, I think, two weeks ago or, or so, uh, a pre alpha, pre alpha version that kind of worked. Actually, it works quite well for uh, an alpha. And you can actually download. Uh, the, the project and install, uh, follow the instructions. And to run that, you just run Jupyter Lab. Uh, and there you go. Um, and as, as you can see, it's a quite a different interface. Uh, it's um, meant to be a different kind of user experience uh, comparing to the current uh, Jupyter uh, notebook. Uh, on the left side, you see there, there are tabs files and commands. It's a nice command um, cheat sheet where you can see the commands and how um, to, the, the shortcuts, and, and you can actually field of them, like cell, and search for stuff here. It comes with an about, um, an about tab on the, on the main area and tells more about the project and other stuff. Uh, but the, the main, uh, window lets you actually do more than notebooks. You can create a notebook, and that's quite familiar as an interface, uh, even if it's a little bit different. Uh, also, the menus are gone, uh, and it's uh, a fully, uh, completely new work. Um, there, there, there's a small part that is being reused, but there's a lot of work that behind it. Uh, both on the interface, you can see that the interface is different. So if, for instance, if I open this, this notebook and start typing something, import this, and then I don't wanna, I, I wanna start a new one, I can start here, and if I wanna have and see both, um, I can actually stack them, I can place stuff in DIY in different places, like this, um, and the whole system uh, is, is, is very new. It's built to, to be pluggable and it's built to be event-based. So uh, one of the problems of the uh, Jupyter plugins is that basically all of them work just putting everything in the, in the dome like a trash can and then reusing stuff. This is much more lightweight and it's meant to be, uh, to be performant and written the proper way. 
uh, you can actually have a new code, uh, an editor to write code and, you know, uh, normally. Uh, but actually you can also curiously start a terminal. So you can actually start a terminal inside Jupyter. And, and I invite everybody to try and, and play with it, try to break it and pose issues and, and possibly uh, pull requests. And it's, it's interesting, uh, especially that the UI can actually CD and or run commands, um, or like if I want to use VI inside Jupyter, I can actually do that. <laughs> so you can actually use your, your preferred uh, editor inside Jupyter, uh, uh, which can be Emacs or VI. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what should be expected uh, here? More, uh, okay, so I skip talk. So this is my 30 seconds talk. Um, Borja, my friend, he has a dream. He want to meet Larry Page. And so we are starting a campaign to help Borja meet Larry Page. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. So this is Borja Twitter account. This is a new hashtag. So <laughs> tweet. If you find Larry around, take a picture with him, take a selfie and tweet and, uh, you know, tag Borja, use the, the hashtag, or if you have ideas or want to set up or anything. Or the contact of Larry Page. Uh, especially if you know Larry Page or have his contact or email or you know his cousin or anything, just contact, contact Borja. Thank you. <laughs> Just one idea, maybe you should go via Google Plus. <laughs> uh, yes. Just a rough idea. Yes. Actually, we were looking for his Twitter account. And <laughs> we, we don't have it. Alex, are you here? Uh, he, he was sitting so nicely in the front there for a minute. We'll skip him. So, data challenge plethora. Who's going to own up to being that? Either that as a name or a person that has not a name but just a description. Here we go. Brilliant. Thank you. And then after that, we've got uh, Florian Bruhen on Crowdfunding. Florian, are you somewhere? Put your hand up. Florian, Florian. Yeah, brilliant. Great. Okay, thanks, man. So you've got Richie A or something? Okay, so a, uh, a father and daughter Richie A, sorry. Um, programmers, father and daughter programmer are going to the bank to apply need? for a loan. Okay. Uh, and the bank manager lady says, okay, well, I'm just going to need you both to um, accept this agreement. So, um, for the daughter, you're going to be the main owner of the property, so I just need you to sign this document. And so the daughter, like, grabs the document, goes, shh, 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 gives it back to the lady, and the lady goes, uh, instead of a signature, you appear to have drawn uh, a perfectly curvy, wavy line. And she goes, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you asked me to sign it. And she's like, ugh, whatever, fine. To the father, I'm just going to need you to co-sign this document. And the father and daughter just look at each other and go, <laughs> Take it away! So what is your name? Ainoa Otoa. Ainoa Otoa. Otoa. Give her a big hand for the Indus, <laughs> Industry 4.0. Now we have another buzzword on stage. I'm so happy. Big hand and you talk. Okay, thank you. Hello to everybody. <laughs> So I work at a machine tool manufacturer company, the company's name is Achetar. We are located here in the Basque country, and now we are launching a data challenge because we want to encourage the Python community to join and to meet the industry. No? Just a few words, few words out. Plethora, Plethora is the spin-off company we have created from this manufacturing company, and it's oriented to the development of products and services uh, towards the industry part or the industrial internet of things. So we are working now on data analytics and we believe that Python has lots, a lot to offer to us. No? That's why we are sponsoring this conference. So this is the kind of machines we built in Echetar. They basically make holes on metal pieces. And what we have done is we have collected data from these machines. Five days collecting data and we have obtained some uh, data sets from these uh, three servo drives. So 
we I invite you to participate to in this in this challenge. Yeah, <laughs> and what you have to do is uh, just work with this data. No? <laughs> okay, we will have prices all, always, a uh, MacBook, iPad, or a ticket for next year's conference. We have put the data, data sets uh, on GitHub. You have also all the information to read here. And the deadline is the end of October. So good luck and thank you. Thank you so much. Is it only me or could everyone look at those big industrial automatic robots forever? <laughs> Let's. Oh, uh, when, when we were setting up for the opening show, um, I looked on the badge of one of the organizers, Lyra, and she had the most sexy usage of the word mother on her badge. She has mother of robots. <laughs> so, you, VGA? Yeah. Just wow, that trying. looks big. Adam Castle, are you here? Adam? Are about RIP. Great. Or is that? No, that's not DisplayPort, or is it? No, no that's HTML. No, no, no. Is Charlie here somewhere as well? Port. I'm fine with both. Great. No? <laughs> Nothing happens? And Pavlo about Jupiter. Great. It should well, work. Well set up. Do you remember the keynote of Rachel from Monday? When she was um, starting, she yeah, told us she okay. went 20 years without someone paying her salary. Oh, this one is for this. I get reports from Greece and France where they go on the streets if it just stops for four weeks. <laughs> but on my side, it should work. Just quickly, by show of hands, does anyone remember the original Shaggy Dog story? Did I tell that last year? Hmm. It's, about a sh it's about a shaggy dog. The original shaggy dog story. If I didn't tell that one, that is like full sense? permission to tell it tomorrow. I, yeah, rather not, but it's about it, 75, it 80 minutes long. Has a display port and after by any chance, <laughs> you can, okay, so, so um, uh, who is the backup speaker? He will be looking for a display port adapter. So it seems Richie doesn't work here. Uh, does someone has a display port, like not mini, but real display port to uh, HDMI adopter? Okay, while we answer that question, should we have Adam up next? Yeah, well, who is next? Who is next? Adam, he's coming. We are switching back to. <laughs> so one request: when you come on stage, shout loud the type of adapter you're using, because our friendly helper always has to jump out last minute. Okay, Ripe Forum, give him a big hand. Cheers. Um, I'm an Englishman living in the Netherlands, so I probably should apologise about Brexit, but that's that. Um, so I'm going to quickly talk to you about the Ripe Forum. I've deleted half my slides because I know that we're short of time. Um, basically, we had to create a, a pyramid uh, web forum app sitting on Mailman 2. Um, it's pretty simple. It's only got about four or three views. This is what it looks like. Uh, you can check it out there. But that's not really why I'm here. Um, I really want to speak about Mailman 3. Um, I'm wearing this really unique blue Python t-shirt. Uh, if you can come and see me afterwards, if you know anything about Mailman 3, about any upgrade from Mailman 2 to Mailman 3, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, but for now, we've got this forum running there, working with Mailman 2. And that's that. Nice that was a good talk. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Some, t some talks are quicker than setting up the laptop. Ah, uh, no, he, he's coming with a um, micropod. You don't have to switch. This one. No? No. It, will wor oh, it won't work okay. on the other one, too. This. <laughs> How many technicians does it take to change a projector? <laughs> What's another word for infinite? Okay, another go. Recompiling his kernel. Wonderful. Oh, it worked. Okay. So, 
or did it? So, Florian, give him a big hand. Ah, you're still setting up. I thought it yeah, was a talk. It, <laughs> it doesn't do what I plan to do yet. Can I just say, I have huge respect for people who come up and then configure their displays using, like, command rind x rander tools. <laughs> this year is the year of Linux on the desktop. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. So it's a story about a boy who's got a very shaggy dog. The dog's Oops. hair is uh, very shaggy. This is our story is actually the origin of the term shaggy dog story. So if you heard my long jokes that go on forever and have like to basically you know, a terrible punchline, uh, they're called shaggy dog stories. Uh, and the original, original shaggy dog story is a story about a boy with a shaggy dog. So having a long intro to a shaggy dog story is a sort of shaggy dog story in itself. Are you ready, Florian? Yeah, my window manager didn't quite do what I wanted, but that <laughs> works. <laughs> the perks of using a tiling window manager. Give him a big hand, everyone. So before I start, I'm wondering, are there people here who watched my last year's lightning talk about Cube Browser or remember it? Yeah, a few. So I won't shamelessly recycle that talk. I'm already doing this for the PyTest training. Um, so that's not what I'm going to talk about. But it's a Wim-like browser. Go test it out. It's awesome. <laughs> um, I also have stickers with me, and I'll do a training. Uh, sorry, I will do a sprint on Saturday. But that's all I'm going to say about it. So a few months ago, I had the problem that I needed to switch its backend, like its web rendering engine, from a thing called Qt WebKit, which was deprecated, to a newer thing called Qt Web Engine, based on Chromium instead of WebKit which is an awesome thing fixing many bugs, but also needs a lot of time. So I really couldn't do it in my free time or it would have taken me months probably. So after a lot of thinking, I thought about setting up a crowdfunding and I started studying in September, so it was the ideal time to like quit my job and do silly things like this. So I didn't really imagine it to take off. Um, my goal was to get 3,000 euro for a month for full-time work, which really isn't much if you're living in Switzerland. So um, 24 hours later, I got two of those 3,000 euros. And a month later, I was at like 7,000. So this went really well. And basically, all I want to do with this talk is to encourage you to try something like crowdfunding if you have like a clear goal and ha already have a user base which, um, like a loyal user base, then it might actually work out really well. Um, just a few hints. First of all, it really pays off to spend time on making a video, making a good text. I've seen crowdfundings with like a page full of text with a lot of typos in it. And if I don't know you, I'm not going to fund your project if your text is crap already. That's just how it is. If you want things to send out, I can highly recommend ordering stickers because let's face it, stickers are dirt cheap. You pay like, you pay like 20 euros for, to get 100 stickers and you pay 30 euros, so 10 euros more to get two and a half thousand stickers, so that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> then you get stamps, a lot of them, like, have you ever paid like 100 euro for stamps to send out letters? That's just crazy. <laughs> then you pay, then you uh, will take some time to just fold paper and put them into envelopes. And you can send out stickers to people, which many people really appreciate because, hey, cool thing you can stick on your laptop. Um, another thing you can do is sending out t-shirts, but the logistics of that is, is quite a bit, uh, more complicated, like I still need to send out 100 t-shirts and I haven't really done it yet. Um, I also wrote, a, uh, like started a blog where I'm doing a daily reporting of my progress, 
If you're curious, it's on blog.qt browser, like Q-U-T-E browser.org, um, which is quite nice, like to show people you're actually doing something and also to not drift off if you like sometimes lack the self-discipline. Like if you do, do work so on something full time on two months, this can happen. Um, a similar thing was done for PyTest uh, recently where I was involved as well. So we crowdfunded the sprint to get our developers together and also got like 12,000 euro, a lot also from companies uh, using PyTest. And yeah, that's a lovely group photo. That's all I got. <laughs> All right, next is Charlie on coding competitions, and then it'll be Pavlo. I'd just like to say, if, 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 if someone can raise 7,000 euro for a browser that works with Vim shortcuts, I think whatever your idea is, there's definitely a way you can raise the money. I, but, but bearing in mind, bearing in mind that I'm quite sure there already is a plugin for Firefox that does exactly that. Isn't, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Charlie, a big ready? hand for Charlie about running a coding competition. Hi, um, I'm Charlie. I work for Man AHL, which is a systematic hedge fund in, based in London. Um, we use a lot of Python, and last year I had the pleasure of working in a team to run a coding competition, the Man AHL Coder Prize. Uh, it was really fun and a great experience, um, so I just thought I'd fill you in on some of the highs and lows and also let you know that we're thinking of running it again. Um, December 1st this year, we're going to launch a, a new challenge for everybody to have a go at. Um, so the, co the code bundle for this um, and all of the instructions are still online, so if you fancy having a go at the challenge yourself, you still can have a go, even though the competition is now shut for this year. So the game was Hexplode, which is a classic uh, expand and conquer game. The idea is to place counters in tiles, and when you have more counters in a tile than there are surrounding tiles, then it Hexplodes, and you expand outwards across the board, hopefully faster than your opponent does. Um, so Andy, my wonderful colleague, coded up an implementation of this. Um, we asked our colleagues to test it, stress test it, and they really did take that to heart. Uh, some of them, I think, put more effort into trying to circumvent some of the rules and, and hack their way through than actually legitimately winning it. But it's probably best that they found the bugs than some of the entrants did. Um, so we, we tweaked it a bit. We, we teamed up with Python Anywhere, who were fantastic, and felt like we were pretty much there, right? Good to go. Uh, how wrong we were. There was so, so much more still to do. Um, we decided on a £5,000 prize, which was quite exciting, um, and came up with two marketing ideas. Um, in binary, really seemed to have quite the eye-catching effect we were going for. <laughs> um, on top of that, we had a Facebook account to deal with, and personal replies were needed to endless questions, tweets to come up with, um, instructional videos, as you can see on the bottom right. When I took this job to be a Python developer, I really didn't expect to spend a day in a film studio with a green screen behind me and, and getting some outtakes <laughs> on the moon, which was great. <laughs> um, we also had Facebook advertising to deal with. We wrote some Python training exercises, which are on the GitHub as well, um, so that newbies can have a go. Um, other marketing uh, things. Um, on top of that, terms and conditions needed to be written up. Uh, we had to research what gaming laws are in the UK and Ireland, not something we tended to do. Um, but one of the ma most biggest tasks was working out how to spread the word. So we wanted every sixth form college and university in the UK and Ireland to hear about this and try and persuade some of their students. But we managed it all. December the 1st came round and we opened up the submission page. Um, so over Christmas, all of our keen entrants were, were coding away. Um, one thing we did underestimate was quite how last minute students might leave things. So despite having a, despite having a month to write a solution to this, um, we had so many submissions in the last hour and in the last 10 minutes, and one in a, just over a second before closing, when they've had a month. Um, but for ages, we had one submission, um, which to be honest with you, I think was a colleague just testing the submissions page. Um, <laughs> 
I, I dyed my hair ginger by this point. So for like all of Christmas, I looked like that. Um, but it worked. We had our submissions. We closed it down far more than we hoped in the end. Um, and we ran all of the algorithms against each other and, and had our final eight entrants. Brought them in for a day. It was such a nice day to meet all of these students that had been working hard on a problem that we'd set for the last month. Um, we tweaked the code and changed the rules slightly, so they had an on-the-day tiebreaker code off, which was quite exciting. And, and finally, we got our winner. So all in all, I think, quite a success. We're, as I said, we're hoping to run it again this year. The, um, the prize pot has increased, so that should be some extra motivation. Um, and we're it wasn't a big enough task last year, so we're expanding it now to all of Europe and Switzerland. Um, so if you are 16 to 25, a student, uh, and live in Europe or Switzerland, this is for you. <laughs> if you, you know okay? anyone, <laughs> it's also for you. <laughs> and, and the UK. Um, <laughs> Please do come speak to me afterwards if you've got any comments, feedback, if you have an idea as to how we can get the word out there. We really want to spread it amongst the Python community and inspire more people to try their hand at Python. Um, and getting in contact with some of these countries is, is going to be hard for us. Um, yeah, that's all. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Harry, who will be the final, light, the final lightning talker? Sorry, say that again? Pablo is next. Pablo, the final VGA, we have to switch. <laughs> what I find funny, they are discussing about getting rid VGA? of the earplug. The, the, what is the English word for it? What they, that's why they're getting rid of it. <laughs> Earbuds, but oh, yeah. not of the VGA. So, hey there, give him a big hand. Hi. Oh, it's quite a few of you still here. Thank you um, for staying with us. Um, right, so um, uh, I'm Pablo, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, Jupiter, um, tricks that you can do with uh, Jupiter. So uh, the headline is, um, you know, you should use Jupiter, and why? Because you really should. Um, okay, um, just briefly. Uh, so, uh, three things that I'd like you to um, take away from this presentation is you can use, um, well, you can try using like uh, Jupyter Notebooks in a production-like environment. I'll show you how. Uh, you, can, if, if, uh, you, can, you can run microservices from a notebook. So, essentially, you can like, um, yeah, you can assign a URL to a cell, essentially, and uh, serve it that way. Pretty awesome. Um, and you should definitely review the magics. I mean, you, pr you probably heard of magics, but uh, you should definitely review the list of it. By the way, uh, can I have a show of hands? Like, how many people uh, heard of Jupyter or used Jupyter? Oh, okay. Um, right, uh, so I'll start with uh, Jupyter magic. So if you do LS magic, you, you can see, I mean, it goes just beyond the screen. So you should really uh, read about each of them. So, um, P info, you can, you can supply like a variable or like a object name to P info, but you can supply, you can, uh, you can give a magic to a magic. Uh, okay, still works. Actually, it, it pops up the, uh, it brings the, this, you know, the pop up window, so you can't see it in the presentation. Um, command line tools, so the exclamation mark, and you can run whatever your command tools are. Uh, like if you, it's like, oh, I really need this package, so just do pip install, you know. Um, the great thing about those is they they return special objects. So if you do like, you know, files, give me give me the output of ls, and then you can do files dot l that returns a list. Files uh, files dot s returns a uh, string, uh, space separated string. Awesome. Uh, there is also dot n for new line. Um, yeah, who is, yeah, that's been around for ages, but there is also who s, which kind of prints the uh, current variables in a table format, quite handy. Um, logging, yeah, I mean, logging is quite useful. So log state gives you like whether login is on, log on, log off is actually not what you think, but it's switching it off. You need to do log start before doing that. Uh, right, microservices, uh, as I said, you can just assign, um, uh, get and post request to a cell. That's actually, so you're looking at a cell that is actually serving uh, a, um, hello, EuroPython. So as you can see, it. so the, the cell above, 
the, this is the presentation that uh, the, the presentation um, made out of a notebook yeah, using NB convert. So that's actually what is running. So you have a cell, you have a first line is a comment says get, and we're gonna assign hello world. Um, and then I just do request.get, and here you go. Awesome, you can, you can inject. Uh, so it's, uh, some people say it's difficult to set the state of a um, uh, notebook, so uh, you, can, you, can, you can send a post request to a cell this way. Um, something to try, yeah. Okay, so productionizing notebooks. Um, I'm gonna sp uh, skip the rationale and... Uh, right. Okay, uh, live demo, okay. Um, right, so this is, as you, uh, you can probably see in the, uh, in the bar, so this is a web page. So this is a web page that is produ uh, produced uh, use, uh, from a, uh, uh, well, Jupyter Notebook. So this is actually a web app, but the backend is still Python. So what it does is basically, so where are we? 2016, okay, so if I switch to, where, where is the location of EuroPython 2014? It says, well, it was in Berlin, wasn't it? Um, so this, uh, this widget is still rendered in Python. This is the proof of concept. This is the code, so you start with a, you start with a notebook. Um, show of hands, please. Um, <laughs> Right, so uh, what, what you can do, then you go into the design uh, uh, phase where you can uh, take those widgets, drag them around, position where you want them, uh, switch the notebook, and then you go file, deploy as local dashboard. You know, that's it. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So once again, what I want you to know is you can productionize microservices, Jupyter Magix, uh, HBH is, is hiring and um, Awesome. That takes us up to six o'clock. I think that means we're out of time. Any final words, Harold, or any uh, um, wisdom that we should share with everybody? Do you think maybe we should do a song together? We I, don't, I don't think we should do a no. song together. <laughs> they behaved well. <laughs> so, thank you for being at the Lightning Talks. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy the conference tomorrow. And see you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>